Hello, I'm going to talk about the RoboThor platform and the RoboThor challenge. RoboThor is a platform to develop and test embodied AI agents with corresponding environments and simulation and the physical world. Here on the left, you see a scene in simulation, and on the right, you see the counterpart in the real world. We try to make these scenes as identical as possible, but in general, the appearance of statistics and the dynamics of movements of the robot are very different from each other. These identical scenes will enable us to study the generalization capabilities of models uh, trained in simulation to the real world. We have these design principles in mind for designing Robotor. First, we wanted Robotor to be modular, meaning that we wanted to have a set of objects so we can move them around to create new configurations. Second, uh, we want a Robotor to be reconfigurable so we can easily create uh, new scenes uh, just by changing the wall layout. We try to uh, design objects in simulation so they closely match uh, the counterparts in the real world. The last but not the least, we wanted the framework to be open and accessible to all researchers. Robothor has 89 scenes in simulation. 14 of them have counterparts in the real world. Here you see the distribution of object categories in Robothor. For example, on the left, you see the distribution of target categories. Uh, these are categories that are used as target uh, for the task of navigation. They are a mix of uh, large objects such as TVs and garbage cans and small objects such as apples and alarm clocks. You also see the distribution of background object categories uh, in the middle and uh, furniture categories on the right side. In total, there are more than 700 object instances in Robotor. Robothor has a variety of wall layouts, furniture layouts, and object location. Uh, here you see the heat maps corresponding to the top-down view of the scenes. As you see here, uh, the wall layouts are fairly variable, and the object locations are uh, fairly uh, uniform within scenes. We use a uh, Locobot, which is a low-cost robot, uh, for our experiments. Uh, Locobot has a set of sensors, such as RGB camera and depth sensor. We access the robot via HTTP, similar to our simulation framework. And we make the API identical across simulation and the uh, real robot, so we can easily deploy models trained in simulation on the real robot. We try to make uh, Robothor easy to use. For example, you need to follow these three steps to use uh, Robothor. The first step is just a simple quick installation. Uh, the second step, uh, you can uh, train your model simulation using the API uh, or the starter code that we've provided. And finally, you can submit your model to our evaluation servers uh, to get evaluated automatically. Okay, my colleague Eric uh, will tell you more about the details of the challenge that we held this year and also uh, how we will move forward in the future. Hi, my name is Eric Colby. I'm one of the engineers on the Allen Institute for AI prior team, and I'm going to talk about the RoboThor challenge that was run this year in conjunction with this workshop. The task for the challenge this year was object nav. To complete this task, a model must accept as input an object type such as TV and navigate an agent through a room until they have an object in view. Here you can see the agent successfully moving through the environment by issuing commands such as move ahead and rotate right, and finally locating the TV. For an episode to be considered successful, the agent must have the object in view and be within one meter of the target. As well, the model must send a stop action to indicate that it believes that it has achieved success in order for the episode to be considered successful. Originally, this challenge was planned to consist of three, fa three separate phases with two of them being executed on our physical robot. The first phase, training, was done entirely in simulation. 
The second phase was intended to be partially done in simulation and partially on the physical robot to allow participants to fine tune to the real environment. The final phase would determine the winner by executing a model on, the un on an unseen room on the physical robot. But due to COVID, the challenge was modified to be simulation only. As well, we added an additional RGBD track to the challenge. The API for the agent within the challenge was designed in conjunction with the Habitat and Gibson teams. This simplified the creation of a model that could be used across any of the challenges. For training, participants were provided a framework consisting of a Docker container and scripts that allowed them to train and then evaluate their performance on, an eval on a validation set. Episodes were provided with varying degrees of difficulty. The longer the minimum distance that the agent had to travel for success, the higher the difficulty. The challenge was hosted on the Eval AI platform, which provided tools for participants to submit a Docker image with their model. We received over 40 submissions between the RGB and RGBD tracks. Here you can see the Sequoia team submitted the best performing model during the test dev simulation phase with a SPL of 0.14 and a success rate of 31%, which shows that there's still room for improvement on this task. I would like to thank all the teams that participated in the challenge, and we look forward to running our models on our physical robot in the near future. So please stay tuned. Thank you very much.